stupidity and especially profound stupidity have become positive evolutionary adaptations. The stupid evaluate risks less well, so they are willing to take on the world without fear of the consequences of their actions. That makes them better entrepreneurs, better businessmen, better politicians. The stupid get a chance to have sex, which is much higher than the clever. That's a fact established in numerous studies. So their reproductive success is much higher. The stupid are everywhere. The stupid and the profoundly stupid are constitute the vast majority of humanity. So they band up together, they team up, they collaborate with each other and they obtain outcomes, favorable outcomes. To be stupid is to be more self-efficacious. And so we are heading into the age of stupidity, idiocracy. In the age of stupid, the clever would, will become an endangered species, species an extinct, extinct variant of humanity. Stupid people will bring stupid people into the world, will breed and interbreed, and stupidity will become a characteristic of humanity. Intelligence and intellect will be outsourced technologically into our devices. The only smart things in our lives will be the smartphone. I, of course, am terrified by the veracity of these claims. I wish I could say that this is tongue-in-cheek. It is not. Humanity is under an imminent danger, an imminent threat of being overrun by idiots, diluted by imbeciles, and this risk is growing by the day. And so we are submerged by a tidal wave of retardation. We often confuse technology with culture and civilization with progress. Nazi Germany is proof that such reflexive linkages are spurious. In Nazi Germany, technology was at the apex, and yet they were barbarians and stupid to boot. In truth, we have become barbarians with iPads and iPhones. We use the latest innovations to play Angry Birds or whatever it is that we play nowadays, and to watch inane videos on YouTube, and to exchange trivialities on Facebook. Traits are not desirable or undesirable in themselves. Traits, qualities, properties, characteristics, of the organism, the phenotype, the genotype, the psychology of the organism. These are advantageous, adaptive, or they are detrimental depending on the environment. That's all. The environment determines which traits will survive and which will not. Traits that afford you reproductive success, traits and qualities and skills and talents that allow you to have children, make sure that you will propagate your genes, these survive. And in today's world, if you're intelligent, your chances of reproducing are much lower. Women prefer men with an IQ lower than 120 to men with an IQ higher than 145. Now, this, these are the results of a study published two years ago, several years ago. It seems that women increasingly prefer stupid men. Why is that? Because our contemporary world, the world we live in, is ruled by stupid people. It's governed by the feeble-minded. Dimwits are empowered by technology and everything is dumbed down to foster mass consumption. Education is a misnomer. Higher education institutions teach how to have fun, how to, how to 
uh, go on hookups, basically, <laughs> and how to game the system to obtain a degree, which is pretty much useless in later life. And of course, how to make student debt. This is the world we live in. And women select for better males, as the manosphere calls them. Women select for inferior men because in the current environment, better, better traits are preferable to alpha traits. In the current environment, what used to be inferiority is an evolutionary advantage, a positive adaptation. Stupidity is a case in point. It is a paradigm shift of mind-bending proportions for those of us in possession of a mind. A study of one million young adults over 40 years, that's four zero years, conducted by Jean, Jean Twenge and her colleagues and published in the March 2012 issue of the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology. This study rocked me, shocked me. It has starkly demonstrated the deterioration from one generation to another. Youngsters today, according to this study, are focused on money, image, and fame, and they disparage values such as community, volunteerism, the environment, and knowledge acquisition. Ostentatious social activism is a form of virtue signaling. These youngers are socially active, demand justice in mass protests on camera. They're posing, they're faking, they're out to garner likes and attention. Other surveys have documented a rising level of illiteracy in the newer, in the younger generations. Many of them are unable to read a label on a bottle or a medicine. As if to illustrate the imminence of these new dark ages, the Encyclopedia Britannica and others, Newsweek and so on, announced that they will cease publication of their print editions. Encyclopedia Britannica has survived for 244 years, but it did not survive the tsunami of idiocy and stupidity and intellectually challenged readers, so to speak. The surviving digital editions of the Britannica are a far cry from the print equivalent in terms of depth, length and erudition. The stupid, the trivial, the frivolous, they are everywhere. Among the working classes, of course, but increasingly you can find these displacing the erstwhile elites, spawning hordes of mindless politicians, idiot business tycoons. Everyone knows who, who, who I have in mind. Narcissistic media personalities, gullible clergy, vacuous, vacuous celebrities, illiterate best-selling authors, athletes with far more brawn than brain, repetitious pop singers, less than mediocre bureaucrats, bovine gatekeepers, and even ignorant and semi-literate academics. And the cacophony of these constituencies of, of intellectually challenged people, their cacophony drowns the few voices of wisdom, expertise, and experience, and the sheer number of the stupid overwhelms all systems of governance and all mechanisms of decision-making. Rather than fight back this tsunami, which is futile, the well-educated, the erudite, and the intelligent choose to withdraw. They avoid the world. They seclude themselves in self-constructed schizoid ivy towers, and they draw all the bridges. Imbeciles, cretins, and morons are a menace to the continued existence not only of our civilization, but also of our species. We may end up being all homo, no sapiens. The percentage of stupid people in the general population actually is increasing. There's been a drop of seven points in global IQ since the 1950s. In terms of absolute numbers, there are more stupid people now 
than the entire human population only a century ago. Modern medicine makes sure that they intellectually challenge the plain dim dimwitted, live on to a ripe old age and reproduce. That we are faced with the daunting prospect of idiocracy is the fault of the malignant transformation of the democratic ideal and the recent onslaught of the media, both old and new. Let's take democracy. Let's start with democracy, the stupid people's pernicious answer to meritocracy. In the not too distant past, dim-witted people had the right to vote once in a while and thus express their completely inconsequential opinion where it mattered least in the ballot box. There was a way to contain stupid people, to sell them on a delusion of power. Alas, the inane idea of one person, one vote, has invaded and permeated hitherto hierarchical environments such as government, the workplace and the military. And I'm saying this is a crazy idea because never mind how pinheaded, brain dead, unqualified or ignorant someone is, he has a vote like I do, same vote that I do. He has the same power in the ballot box, box like me or, 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 or you. If you are a professor, with four doctorates, you have the same power like a semi-retarded with a motorcycle <laughs> or something. You know what I mean? This is, this is unbelievably, unbelievably idiotic, this malignant egalitarianism. People should not have the right, the equal right to vote. People should not have equal rights, period, because people are not equal. With technology at their disposal, the stupids repeatedly interfere with and disrupt the proper functioning of virtually every system, every institution, every process. Even the generation and transfer of knowledge have been democratized, as crowdsourcing yielded enterprises such as Wikipedia, the so-called encyclopedia that anyone can edit, add to delete from and generally vandalize. Internet search engines rank results not according to the quality of the content, the merits and authority of the author, no. They rank the results by the number of votes, by the number of views, by the number of likes. And these votes and these views and these likes come from, they are cast by, you guessed it, mostly dense people, mostly stupid people who now congregate on social networks. The stupid determine your search results. This widespread and much lauded vandalism of human knowledge and even, and even human information, as information is the raw material for knowledge. There's a vandalism going on which reflects the utter collapse and disintegration of the education system. Our education system turns out illiterate, nascent and irrational graduates, having annihilated its standards in order to lucratively embrace them as students in the first place. And so we have honorary doctorates. Taylor Swift is the new PhD. <laughs> the stupid, dimly aware of their innate inferiority, the stupid are anti-elitist, anti-intellectual, anti-excellence, anti-expertise. They hate, they hate intellectually superior people. They detest geniuses. They want to bring everything down to their level. But while in the past, the, these remained only sentiments, today they have become an ethos code of conduct, a set of values and ideals embodied or reified in, in the woke movements, for example, in political correctness. It is politically incorrect and impolitic and impolite to claim any advantage, any superiority. And if you do claim any difference, 
it's as a victim, victimhood has taken over because stupid people are victims most of the time as they should be. As they should be, natural selection aims to get rid of stupid people. And so they are victimized. Egalitarianism is running amok. Everyone is equal. The doctor, the medical doctor and his patient. They're negotiating. They're talking as equals. They're not equals. Professors and their students. The students dictate to the professor what to teach and how to teach. Experts and laymen. The layman says, it's only your opinion. Expertise is just another opinion, equal to anyone else's. This is beyond sick. This is dangerous. This is counterfactual, of course. People are not equal. If I am the expert, you shut up and learn. End of story. I'm not interested in your opinion. I would, of course, be interested in your opinion, if you acquire an education equal to mine, but not a minute before. And even then, if I'm more clever than you, if I have a higher IQ, you should still shut up and listen to me and learn from me because you are not my equal. Technology, in an act of self-preservation, past civilizations had confined the stupid to certain settlements replete with their drinking establishments, entertainments, and sports arenas. The stupid congregated there, away from the mainstream and lacking any and every influence. There, the intellectually challenged could safely torment each other with their vulgarities and rampant uninformed idiocy. In, this, in these settlements, establishments, enclaves, Prison islands, call them, uh, call them whatever you wish. We, need, we, we sequestered the stupid. We isolated their toxic impact. But the advent of the radio, television, and most egregiously the internet, these technologies have changed all that. Now stupid people have unmitigated access to the commons. They've they control the kind of technology that allows them to pollute the airwaves and the broadband and our screens with their inferior analytic capacity. Low brow output, trivial observations, monosyllabic exclamations and harebrained queries. And so the new media have transformed stupidity from a mental endemic or pandemic to a viral pandemic. The wise and the knowledgeable may broadcast, while the stupid merely narrow cast. But the stupid have the upper hand because they have Google, they have Facebook, Twitter, Blogger, Amazon, YouTube. They are, these are decimating traditional print and electronic media. And as I say, I, I would like to repeat this, stupidity used to be an endemic an endemic situation, uh, an epidemic limited to specific locations. Now it's a global viral pandemic. And now the stupid are empowered with technologies that allow them to transition from narrow casting to broadcasting. The te technological empowerment is the crux of the problem. There are no barriers to entry, no gatekeepers, no institutional filters. No erudite and experienced intermediaries or moderators to hold back the avalanche of doltish bladderdash, uh, balderdash, the tsunami of nonsense, the flood of misinformation, factoids and conspiracies that corrupt our intellectual space. There's a problem of discovery, separating the wheat from the chaff. It's a mission impossible. You can't tell apart the pearls from the trash they are buried in. Millions of books, so-called books, are published by Amazon every year. 99.9999 and I don't know how many nines of them should have never been published or in the best tradition should have been should be burned because they make it impossible to find the 100 truly good qualitative books that are published simultaneously. 
commercial interests inevitably and invariably side with the brainless masses because the brainless masses have a much bigger aggregate purchasing power. The privatization of education is one manifestation of this creeping decadence. The mindless nature of television programming is another example. Video games, the empty one-liners that comprise most conversations on social networks are the culmination of this. We are surrounded with clods, harassed by the lame-brained, criticized, censored, and ordered by simpletons. This, these are, this may be the new dark ages, but we have hit a new low because the original dark ages were still controlled by intellectual elites of the church, the elite of the church, for example, educated clergymen. These new dark ages are controlled by the peasants. The peasants have revolted the sewer had exploded and we are all floating in you know what.